so exciting to hear testimonies and from our teenagers. And I, I think we need a night where us adults get up and tell our story and tell what God's doing in our life. We don't need a camp experience. Uh, every day is a camp, can be a camp experience. We don't need a missions trip. Every day of our life should be a missions trip. We go to places uh, like work, like school, neighborhoods we live in, Grocery stores we shop in should be a mission trip. And we should, we should all have stories to tell about what happened on our trip that week. So be thinking this week, maybe uh, God would do something and give you an experience. Uh, and you don't need a platform like this to be able to tell that. Just tell somebody. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. I, I, I had a message for tonight. It's on four pages here. And I'm going to try to condense that into five minutes for you. And then we're going to get ready and we're going to baptize some people who have made decisions for Jesus Christ, who are going public with their faith. And uh, Pastor Luke, about three weeks ago on a Sunday morning, shared a message about who, who we are in Christ, that we are salt and light. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, and this is the message version, which I love this version. I've shared this before a few times. Uh, Jesus said this, you're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God's not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. So our faith ought to be public. It should be out there. We should not uh, have faith just for ourselves. He says, if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. That's our job, to shine, to be public. Keep open house, be generous with your lives by opening up to others. You'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Our lives can point people to Jesus Christ. So it was water baptism where Jesus went public with his ministry. It was when he came to John the Baptist and was baptized by him. That is the point when John realized this is the Messiah. Pastor Hawkins preached about that last Sunday night. John chapter 1, you can read, read it in John chapter 1, starting verse 29. It was, it was, it was when, when Jesus came and John baptized him. He wasn't going to do it. Uh, but Jesus said, this, is, this has to be done. And he realized at this point, because when Jesus went into the water and came back up out of the water, uh, like a dove, the Holy Spirit came and, and, and remained on him. And, and, and God had given him that sign ahead of time. So there's a passage of scripture just want to tell you a little bit about water baptism for those that, that uh, may not quite understand it. There's a lot to water baptism, but really it's a, public, it's a public statement of what's happened on the inside. And Paul says it like this in Romans chapter 6. He says, so what do we do? Do we keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our old house there? Or don't you realize that we packed up and left there for good? Talking about the old life, the old way of doing the life before Christ. He said, look, we, when we came to Christ, we, we took on new citizenship. We packed up and left there for good. This is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we come up out of the water, we entered into this new country of grace, a new life in a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we're lowered into the water, it's like the burial of Jesus. So it's symbolic. It's like the burial of Jesus. When we're raised up out of the water, it's like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we're going in our new grace sovereign country. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to that sin-miserable life. No longer at sin's every beck and call, what we believe is this, if we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive he brings God down to us. From now on, think of it this way, sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. Like Jada said, it's the old life. That's, 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 it's, a new, it's a new chapter. It's a new beginning. What happened back here is gone. Thankful that when, when Christ comes into our life and forgives us of our sin, that's in our past. He says, I take your sin as far and remove it from you as far as the east is from the west, never to remember it again. He chooses not to bring that up against you. That's the amazing thing about Christ. We're new creations. If anyone's in Christ, 
2 Corinthians 5, 17, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And that's what we're talking about tonight. These people who are going to be baptized are identifying with that life. They're saying, look, I've accepted Jesus Christ. There's this old me and now there's a new me and I'm standing up in public proclaiming I'm on a new team. I've got a new allegiance. So he goes on to say, From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue, and you hang on every word. You're dead to sin, but alive to God. That's what Jesus did. That means that you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with the old way of life. Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time. Remember, you've been raised from the dead. Think of it like that. New life, you're raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live anymore. After all, you're not living under that old tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of God. I'm I'm a a sports fan, and uh, many of you know, if you've known me for very long, that I'm pretty much a a Chicago Bulls fan. Uh, Michael Jordan's the best player of all time. Well, (laughs) who said praise God? That's great. That's great. Just this, this offseason, uh, a man by the name of LeBron James, anybody ever heard of him? Uh, great. Now, listen, it's not about that. Come on. Um, but LeBron James, if you follow any sports, you know that LeBron James signed a new contract this year with a new team. He's played for a couple different teams, Cleveland, went to Miami, came back to Cleveland, did pretty good there. But this offseason, he signed a four-year, $154 million contract with the Los Angeles Lakers. So after signing this contract in private, what they do is they, they do a, a press conference. And the press conference, uh, that's where they announce, they go public with this allegiance that they've made. So LeBron James goes public. He's with his new team, the Los Angeles Lakers, and he's there kind of displaying for everyone else his new allegiance with his new uh, jersey, with his new number on it. It's a public declaration of his commitment to a new team. LeBron James is no longer a Cleveland Cavalier. He's a Los Angeles Laker, whether you like it or not. So being saved is kind of like we signed the contract. And water baptism is kind of like our press conference. And so in front of everybody else, we're saying, look, I'm on a new team. The old me has, the old me is gone. The old sinful person that followed sinful ways is gone and dead and buried. And I've been raised to new life, new life in Christ Jesus. It doesn't mean I'm perfect, but it means I got a new manager. It means I got a new coach and I'm going to follow that coach in the way he has for me to go. I've heard it said by many of these students up here, God's got a plan and a purpose for my life. You heard that this morning by Pastor Zach. And it really is the truth that God has a plan and a purpose for all of us. This, this evening as, as, uh, as each one of these uh, that come to water baptism, they're making a, a public declaration. They're going public with their face say, saying, look, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. What I was is, is in the past. And it's going to be symbolized by being dead and buried in the water and being raised to new life in Christ Jesus. And it's an exciting thing. We've got exciting days ahead of us. I'm going to ask those who are being baptized, if you could, we'll make your way back here. I don't know if Pastor Luke's already got back there. He's He's the uh, guy in the tank. He's going to be the one getting wet. So um, if you guys will just make your way back to the, to the area back there. We might, uh, I don't know if we have a song or something that we, that we can sing. I don't know how long it'll take them to get ready. Um, but this is a time of celebration. Good things are happening. Lives are being changed, not just at camp. Lives are being changed in our Wednesday night services all the time. Lives are being changed in our Sunday services all the time. Lives are being changed throughout the week because some of you have gone public with your faith and uh, you're not afraid to let people know. You gonna sing? I don't know, he's shaking his head no when he's got his lips like this. I think that means he's not gonna sing. (laughs) While we, while, we wait for, while we wait for this to happen, let me just ask you to, uh, if you'd just close your eyes, we're going to pray. And uh, while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I realize we've got a, uh, 
We've got a mixed crowd of people here. We've got some people who uh, have, been, have been in this thing called uh, Christianity and faith in Jesus for a long, long time, decades. And obviously tonight we've got some who are very, very new in their faith. There may be some people here tonight that you've never put your faith in Jesus. Maybe just some stories that you've heard from some teenagers tonight about what God's done in their life and how he's used them in a variety of different ways. You realize that there is a life that you haven't experienced And there's something inside of you that's speaking to you to say, you know what, there's something real there. There's something different that's going on with these people. And and tonight you're saying, look, I'm I'm interested in opening my heart and my life to Jesus and inviting him to come in and change me too. This could be a day that changes your life forever. And so with heads bowed and eyes closed, if that's you tonight and you want to say, look, maybe, maybe you've been considering it. Maybe it's something that's totally new. I don't know. But if there's a voice speaking to you saying, this is the right way, this is the truth, this is the life, and you're saying tonight, I want to give my life to Jesus. With heads bowed and eyes closed, you just raise a hand saying, that's me. And tonight, I I want to make a declaration of faith in Jesus, that I am coming to him. And here's the deal. You invite him in. He forgives you of all your sin. Gives you hope of eternal life with him forever in heaven. If that's you and you just raise your hand and say, Pastor Jeff, pray with me that I, that I would find Jesus Christ in my life. Lord, I just thank you for salvation that's a free gift from you. I thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your love and your mercy. I thank you that every day is a new day and that every day, God, is a day that we can proclaim our faith, our allegiance to you, uh, our Savior, the one who came and gave his life, died on a cross, was dead and buried and rose again, overcoming death, hell, and the grave. Thank you for life that we have and that we don't have to live the way that we used to live the way of this world, but God, that you've given us a new way, a new plan. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And tonight, God, as we celebrate with these who have put their faith in you and who are making a public declaration of that faith in you today, we celebrate, we give thanks, and may every day, Lord, we live for those purposes and for that plan that you have for us with our eyes fixed on you, the author and the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. We give you praise tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.